are these people? We're going to talk about oil, oil companies to be specific. Oh. So everyone's favorite oil conglomerate, Shell, is leaving Africa, Colin. You would think that's a good thing, right? You know, I would hope. Yeah, but I'm sure there's a catch to this. There might be I haven't be read one. the story yet, but uh, especially from Nigeria, given that they have a huge oil conglomerate in Nigeria. That's what they're known for, among other things, as far as yeah. um, natural resources. So this should be interesting as to why yeah. Shell is leaving. So Shell exits from Nigeria. Environmental campaigners say the oil giant should not be allowed to escape culpability for the environmental and societal damage it is called in the Niger Delta. So, oh, that's why. The fuckers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, this is by Andy Rawl and James Marriott from Open Democracy Consortium News picking this up as they do. So, Nigeria oh, activists... Could, yeah. you, don't need, I, you don't need to read this article. You, <laughs> you already, already know. Said why. Yeah, Nigerian already activists... Know. Believe Shell's apparent end to its 87 year operation in the country is an effort to avoid its legal responsibilities while holding on to potential profitable side of the business. In January, East the Palestine, only... anyone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In He's January. Been, like giving those vibes. Oh, we don't want to have anything to do with the destruction that we cause, but no. we still want the money. Money, money, please. Money, please. Um, in January, the oil giant revealed it has reached an agreement to sell its Nigerian offshore subsidiary to Renaissance, a consortium of four Nigerian oil firms and one based in Switzerland. But despite the $2.8 billion deal, Shell will effectively still own part of the business and will continue to bankroll Renaissance's onshore exploration in Nigeria going forward. So did they really leave, Colin? No. Did they? Right. This no. Is, this is monopolies trying to demonopolize while continuing to monopolize. That's classic, like, oil company. This is like Rockefeller tactic. Um, so, the company's press statement confirmed it will loan the new buyers up to $1.2 billion to help them buy their stake in the Shell Petroleum Development Company of Nigeria Limited. It will also provide Renaissance with financing of up to $1.3 billion over future years. This will fund its share-specific decommissioning and restoration costs and part of the development of gas resources for NLNG, a company producing natural gas in Nigeria, to export to global markets in which Shell will retain a 25.6% interest. Renaissance, meanwhile, will take over responsibilities for dealing with spills, theft, and sabotage, as well as Shell's ongoing contributions to the remediation of past environmental damage. That's the kicker, right? So they're kicking this over right. to Renaissance. Like, here, you Nigerians deal with the mess, right? And we'll even can, let the Swiss can, help and, out. Right, and they do not. I, I'm of Nigerian descent. I haven't been to Nigeria. I do know West Africa well enough that they do not have the rest of necessary resources to handle this. They yeah. see the money involved, and they're going to be like, yes, please, but not necessarily think of the implications of them taking this money. This will also, I would imagine this will also make them, this will kind of make, this makes them the fall guys, essentially, for yeah. the masks Mar that Marika, Shell themselves created. Marika Voss so, in the chat saying, it's, it's a Shell game. Uh, I, I see what you yes. did there, Marika. Appreciate it. Um, so, Campaigners have told Open Democracy that Shell should not be allowed to escape culpability for the environmental and societal damage it has caused in Nigeria. Next. Next. Celeste Akpabari, a long-term environmental activist with Nigeria's Ogoni region, said, Shell has to restore our environment and lost livelihoods before selling anything. Yes. Our environment should be restored to the level Shell met it. Yes. <laughs> you know, you're not Ryan, Celestine. You're not lying. Um, Akbapari believes the millions of oil barrels split in the Niger Delta over almost nine decades have significantly worsened his community's finances. There was more than 10,000 oil spills between 2011 and 2022 alone, 
according to the National Oil Spill Detection and Response Agency. Our people enjoy their fishing and farming businesses, but can't do that anymore, Akbavari said. In a situation where there's a complete absence of government, as we presently have in Nigeria, is it is monies we get from our fishing and farming businesses that we use in sending our children to school, provide health care, and pay other bills. Now we can't even do that, and we watch our children and dependents die of hunger and sickness because of poverty. Civil society and community opposition to Shell has been widespread in Nigeria since the early 1990s. Many have been angered by the pollution the company has emitted in the country, as well as its burning of natural gas, a practice associated with oil extraction that can save an energy firm money, but is associated with serious health complications for those living nearby. So that's that's what they're talking about, these little gas flares, right? Remember, remember how we talked right. about how oil, if we're pulling oil, there is also natural gas present, right? Right. Because, you know, like a little layered cocktail, right? You know, your little B-52, that's how it's working. You know, a little density, density problem. So this is, they're burning that natural gas instead of collecting it, right? Because it's cheaper mm -hmm. to do so. They just want the Earl. Um, so public discontent only grew at the executives of the Agoni 9, a group of activists who opposed Shell's operations. Execution. Ex wait, public dis discontent Execution. only grew at the executions of the Agoni 9, a group of activists who opposed Shell's operations in the Niger Delta, an alleged exploitation of the Agoni people. The activists were sentenced to death at a trial by Nigeria's military in 1995 having been accused of inciting the murders of four Agoni chiefs who disagreed with the strategy of their organization, the movement for the survival of the Agoni people. Shell had a watching brief at the trial, which was widely discredited even at the time when the UK Prime Minister John Major described it as fraudulent. When a UK Prime Minister is calling you fraudulent, something's up. Right. Um, several key witnesses have since claimed Shell actors and government officials bribed them with offers of money, a house, and jobs at the oil company to say the activists hadn't yep. been involved in the murders. The oil giant has always denied these accusations, as well as it claims it colluded with the Nigerian military on the trial. In the decades since, Agoni communities have sought justice and tried to hold the oil giant accountable for the role they believe it played in the activists' deaths. We're going to get to a story of another corporation and their their possible murders and what might be happening there in another segment. Stay tuned for that. But, you know, hopefully we can make that happen here. It might be nice. Um, So Extinction Rebellion have a banner, right? Shell to hell, Agoni people not forgotten. Right there. There you go. You see it? I like that little logo. Very good. Very good graphic work. Um... So, Shell, meanwhile, had tried to distance itself from Nigerian subsidiary with a public relations response driven not by staff in Lagos or Port Harcourt, but by its London head office, which suggested there was a problem with one local branch in Africa, but not a larger issue. A practice began even before the trial. In a 1993 letter, Shell said it did not operate using a top-down management approach. Each operating company not only has its own legal identity, but also responsible for its own day-to-day -day operation. Uh-huh. Nigerian political scientist Claude Aki believes Shell has always responded to the backlash against its operations in Nigeria with a focus on damage limita limitation rather than sincerity. This alleged strategy of reputation protection is seemingly present in the oil giant's court cases. Back in 2009, Shell agreed to pay $15.5 million to the family of Ken Sarawiwa, the president of the movement for the survival of the Agoni people, who was one of the Agoni Nine. In doing so, the company walked away from the case denying liability. Before settling, Shell had stop. made... Go ahead. Go. Finish that sentence. Before settling, Shell had made repeated attempts to get the case thrown out. So they settled out of court. Yeah. <laughs> Essentially, to so, the tune of fifteen yeah. million dollars, which like, I would argue for is a member cheap. of the Ogoni is something for them, nothing. Like right. you know, 
Well, given what they said regarding the implications of their oil drilling yeah. has caused within the community, like, that's pennies, really. Yep. Yes, it is. So, other court cases have been brought against Shell over the deaths of the Agoni 9, so far without success. But other group of activists won an unrelated battle with the company in the Netherlands in May 2021, in which Shell was found liable for causing dangerous climate change worldwide and ordered by the District Court of The Hague to reduce its CO2 emissions by 45% within 10 years. The historic verdict, which could pave the way for more prosecutions of Shell and other big international polluters, was brought by Friends of the Earth Netherlands and six other organizations and 17,000 co-plaintiffs. Big class actions. Um, I'm going to butcher this name, I'm sure. Milud Finzi sent a letter to Shell's board of directors in April 2022 calling for urgent action to comply with the 2021 verdict. The NGO warned about personal liability risks resulting from a failure to act. In July of that year, Shell appealed the decision. Shell's Nigerian operations have also been the subject of lawsuits in the UK. The company agreed to pay $55 million to settle a case brought by 15000 600 members of the Bodo community after a massive oil spill in the area in 2014. Day, the British law firm that represented the community, told Open Democracy that Shell had admitted some fault, but disputed the amount of oil spilt. Okay. Um, and last November, London's High Court ruled that 13,000 farmers and fishers from the Agali and Belay communities can sue Shell over chronic pollution of their water sources and destruction of their way of life. A report in The Guardian at the time said Shell denied directly owning the claimants, though it said its Nigerian subsidy, the SPDC, has accepted responsibility for the spills it caused and compensated affected parties were required. So they're literally passing the buck to yes. the Nigerian subsidiary, right? Yes. Yeah. So... Yes. <laughs> it, 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 I hate this because this is kind of like the thing that I hate that yeah. Africans are kind of known for, but yeah. in the in a stereotypical way, but like the corruption. Like give them a little money and they'll do basically anything. And really excuse me, literally a little money. Like if you're mm -hmm. going to sell out, I would, like make it count in my mind. Right. But it's like it, this is essentially like a pair of socks. Yeah. Like, obviously, I'm not being literal. But I'm just kind of, you know, but, you know, sell out for, like, make them pay for it. Literally yeah. make them pay for it if you're going to sell out that way. <laughs> you yeah. know, and often they don't. So, yeah. I, yeah so, <laughs> Lede, which is also oh, representing the Ogale and Belay communities, issued a statement after Shell announced the SBDC sale to Renaissance, saying its clients are concerned about how the proposed sale could affect their claim. The law firm has since told Open Democracy that the details of the sale still remain unclear. In its statement, Lede added it would be unconscionable for Shell to pack up its offshore operations in Nigeria without cleaning up its mess and paying compensation. We consider that Shell, having made billions of pounds over decades from extracting oil resources from Nigeria, should fulfill its legal responsibilities and not leave behind an environmental catastrophe as it seeks to exit the Niger Delta. Renaissance, which is based in Nigeria, will likely be immune from lawsuits in the Netherlands or the UK, one reason why activists and civil society organizations have called on the Nigerian government to stop the sale. Last month, if, any, if anything, they should go along with the lawsuit. Yes. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so if last it's, month... If they're, if, it, if they're not going to be affected by it, then they should really fight against it. Yeah. Alongside these activists. Yeah. So I'm sure they're getting some kickbacks, though, that they are very happy to receive. Um, oh, I'm sure. Last month, international Nigerian NGOs, including Amnesty International Environment Rights Action Friends of the Earth Nigeria, wrote to the Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission urging it to refuse regulatory approval for the sale. The letter added, Shell should not be permitted to use legal gymnastics to escape its responsibilities for cleaning up its wide, widespread legacy of pollution. The sale, 
should not be permitted unless local communities have been fully consulted, the environmental pollution caused to date by SBDC has been fully assessed, and funds have been placed by SBDC and escrow sufficient to guarantee that cleanup costs will be covered. So they're essentially saying, leave them a check. You got to pay for it. That's that's what they're asking. So Shell did not answer Open Democracy's questions with a spokesperson instead directing us to a press release and FAQ section about the sale on its website. Cindy Baxter, who has campaigned against the oil industry for decades, told Open Democracy nearly 30 years after Kinsara Wiwa and eight others were hung for protesting Shell's pollution, the Agoni people are still fighting it in the courts. Before this corporation leaves the country, it must clean up and pay for its environmental crimes. So, any questions, Care Bear? No, I don't have a question. It's just kind of sick. I mean, you read the subheading, and, like, I immediately knew what this is <laughs> about. But, yep. You know, but, again, it's just, it's just so disappointing, like... This is one of the things that I hate about Africa, and I love the continent. You know, I love the people there. Everyone knows this, but it they just play themselves to the Western fiddle every single time. Anything out of poverty, really. It's just like, we want money. Or like, so if they're willing to get it, then they're going to take it. And to the detriment on themselves and then and it's often most of the time it's not even for the benefit of the communities that they serve it's the benefit of themselves so that's what really gets me is that it'd be one thing if they were really if they took the money to actually enhance the livelihoods of the people around them more often than not it's not that so yeah. it's just it sucks that again this is a kind of stereotype of africans like especially in the West that people view them as, but right. it, it, it makes sense. But at the same time, it's like, have some fucking backbone people. Like <laughs> you've seen how, no, but you, you, you've seen how like the West has basically fucked you over and your families and your communities and you want, and you're willing to accept payment because for what, like it, you benefit, uh, monetarily just from the very thing that is essentially destroying your people that makes no sense to me like yeah there's certain things in life that you shouldn't be you you shouldn't be be willing to sell yourself in order to do or receive and i think this is one of those things but like i said if um if they're going to be immune for any situations in court which would implicate them in any of this i don't see why renaissance does not again have a backbone and be like no we'll we'll try you at court too yeah. um like if it, especially since it, they essentially got bribed to clean up the mess it, you would make the argument that 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 would be more of enough to you know counter shell but yeah I it kind of reminds me though of, in thinking in terms of I I've mentioned my my teachers union before my local union not the not the federal one that we often complain about but in terms of not necessarily having the resources or like um again the fortitude but mostly the resources where if Shell went against them. And my guess is that might be a part of why Renaissance has been willing, because I'm sure there's some corruption on their part that Shell might know that they're like, if you go against us, then we will exp essentially expose you too. That's yeah. kind of also what I'm thinking about is why they're willing just to kind of go along with it and take the money without trying them in court. That's just right now I'm thinking of that. So... So I kind of have to wonder what has, what is Renaissance also complicit in, if anything, that they will not stand up against Shell um, to go along with uh, this court case as well. So again, okay. I'm just speculating, but that would be my guess. No, under, understood. No, yeah, this is classic corporations avoiding responsibilities, you know. So, just 
terrible, but figure we should bring it up because it was interesting enough. So, but talking about these things is why we're demonetized. You can go to codashv.com slash indie news network or scan that QR code on your screen. Shell, if you're listening, if you want to pay us off, right there. Very easy. Um, but otherwise, you can just like and subscribe, hit the share button, share it with your friends, leave a comment. We're trying to get to 2K. We're, we're literally right there. We're on the brink. So kick us over that, kick us over that little, little hurdle right there. Um, but otherwise, thanks for watching. Thank you.